let's look at how to create a layer 3 wire guard tunnel on Linux. So first of all, I have this general network setup where I've got the blue machine, the red machine, and then some gateway, which is the green machine. In between them, which you won't see the green machine, but you'll just see that I can communicate between them. And I'm going to be creating a virtual tunnel, virtual interface on both sides, so the red and blue can talk to each other directly, or pretend they're talking to each other directly through WireGuard. All right, so I'll jump over to the right red machine right here, and the idea is you first need WireGuard installed. Um, on my machine right here, I would need to do yum install WireGuard on uh, the Debian-based things. It's just uh, app get install uh, WireGuard. So WireGuard tools versus WireGuard, just get it installed. Once you get it, you can use the WG command, and I've got a gen key option, and it'll generate a key, and you can see that it generates a different key every time. And I just want to create a private.key file. It does have this thing where it's concerned about the permissions of the file. If I take a look at the permissions, you can see that the file is world readable, assuming anybody is in the root directory, which they shouldn't be. But if I put it somewhere else, it could be a problem. So I can do a chmod um, 600 on the private key and then it's much happier and much nicer looking. All right, so the key has been created. Now the next thing I want to do is take that, that key, so I cat up my private key, and I want to redirect it or uh, pipe it into the WireGuard command for a pub key, and then I want to generate a public key, and then save it as the public key file. So now I have a private key and a public key. And this is going to be important to do on both machines so you have them ready. So I'm gonna jump over now to the blue machine and do the same thing. So I've got the WireGuard gen key and I want to redirect that into private key and I'll change the permissions for the private key and then I'm going to generate the public key based off the private key. So wire, wire guard, and actually I'm going to cat first cat, private key, and I'm going to redirect into a wire guard pub key command, and redirect that into public key. All right. So now at this point I have two keys, I have my public and my private, you can see right there. And I want to get the keys across the machines. And so I could um, look at this and say, well, it's kind of nice. I can cat up my public key. And you can see this is the public key right there. And I want to get this key moved to the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull up another terminal where my I have a normal user. And I'm going to SSH over to the red machine and I will punch in my password there, and then I have it in there. I can just do switch over to my root user. So this is logged into the red machine right here, and then I can switch over to the blue machine. I can take this public key right here, and I want to copy it, and so you can uh, paste with this. And uh, I'll just go ahead and um, echo this into my, um, what's called blue key. So right there, I got blue key. So if I look at this one right here, this is the red machine. I have the public, private, and the blue key. I'm gonna do the same thing on the red machine. So I can just X out of here. I'll get that terminal all the way closed. And I'll just clear this right here and jump over to the red machine and do the same basic steps. So I am in the red machine. I'm going to create a, well, I jump to a user terminal, SSH over to the blue machine, type in the password that there. And so, and the reason I have to do it from a normal user is because the root user has been prevented from logging in through SSH. So just a security measure. So I can't, don't have to worry about um, brute force attacks on SSH. All right, so now that I am right here and I'm logged into the blue machine, I'm going to switch over to the root user. 
and now I'm in the root account on the blue machine. You can see there is no blue or no red dot key file here. And I'm going to echo and then I'm going to switch over to the other account right here, the root account. I'm going to cut out my public key. I'm going to copy this. Go over to the blue machine. I will press the middle button to paste and, and I will redirect that into my blue dot key file. All right. So now you can see there is a blue key. Actually, that's not what I want. I want to call it called the red key. So let's just move that blue to red key. So I have to spell it correctly, but that is okay. Um, all right, clear that up, and let's just go ahead and exit out of this right here so that I am now on just the root accounts. So clear that, look at my directory here, and I'll switch over. I can see that I have the blue key there, and I switch over to my blue machine. And I do a directory listing, and I can see that I have the red key right here. Okay. So now at this point, you have them copied over. You're ready to go <clears throat> with setting things up. So from the blue machine, uh, I have an IP address. I have config, and I can see that my IP address is 172.16.16.10. The red machine is 172.17.17.10. We just need to know the, the IP addresses. And so what I'm going to do is create a WireGuard interface. So I do IP link add device WG0 type WireGuard. So I create the interface. And now I'm going to assign an IP address to that interface. And if I jump back to my diagram and look at what I want to do, on the blue side, I want it to be 192.168.123.1. So I will assign an IP address to that. So IP adder add 192.168.123.1. And I'll put that on the device WG0. And I can go ahead and activate that link right now. So IP link set w, WG0 up. All right. So that's activated. It should be up. However, the other side isn't configured and it isn't actually set to connect through or anything like that. So let's go ahead and set up the IP address. So the 192.168.123.2 on the other side of the interface. So I will switch to the red machine and I will create the link IP link add dev wg0 it could be the same name type wire guard and i will ip adder add 192.168.123.2 forward my device wg0 and i'll activate that link with ip link set w wg0 so now the interface is up. Now I can't ping the other side, so I do ping 192.168.123.1. It shouldn't be able to ping because it doesn't know how to get there and any of that stuff like that. All right. So the next step is I want to go ahead and set a route to that. So if you remember this one right here, is um, the 192.17.17.0/24 network, and in order to get to the other side, it's the 172.16.16.0, and so I can um, tell it to route through that, or um, I could do something else in order to get there. But um, for right now, let's just let's just keep it the way it is. Um, and we'll go ahead and set up our keys. So I do WG set WG zero 
listen port. And then I need a port number, so I'll do 48574, kind of a nice good number. Private key. And I will do private, private key. So that is the private key. Next, I'm going to set my peer for the other side. So uh, let's go ahead and cat out my um, the blue key. You can see, see what it is. And uh, I do WG set WG zero peer. And then I will paste in this key right here. And then do a persistent key alive for 25 seconds. Allowed um, IPs. And I can decide what IP it is I want to do. But I can just do anything. So I'll just do 0000, zero, 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 zero slash 0 just to do everything. Then end point would be the IP address of the other side. And so I am the 172 at 16, 16, 10, or 17, 17, 10, and I want to connect to the 172.16.16.10. And uh, I'm going to be connecting on, let's just have the same port number, so 48574. 48574. And then I do that. Now, at this point, I probably want to actually allow that through the firewall. So I do firewall cmd add port um, and then I can add that interface um, and I can do 48574 and I believe this is UDP and I can make that persistent if I wanted so it's permanently there permanent permanent all right so now that should be in place I'm gonna go ahead and jump to the other side and do the other one so I'll jump over the blue one and clear this out I'll go ahead and WG set WG 0 listen port to be 48 Five seven four, and my private key is going to be my private key. There we go. Listen, okay. Listen dash port. All right, now it's it's ready to listen there, and I'm going to set up my peer as well, and I'm going to cat out my peer, which is red key, and then I'll go ahead and do this WG set wg0 peer and then I'll go ahead and copy this right here copy this without the new line middle click to paste and then I will do a persistent keep keep alive of 25 allowed IPs. I will allow everything again. And then I will make the end point be the other side, which would be 172.17.17.17.10. And I am going to use the same port number on the other side. So four eight five seven four, and then I want to allow it through the firewall again. So firewall cmd cmd add port, and then the port number is four eight five seven four and UDP, and make that a permanent one. Permanent. 
All right, at this point, um, if I have everything configured correctly, I should be able to ping the other side. So let's first of all figure out what my IP addresses are. I can see that I am the 192.168.123.1, so I could ping 192.168.123.1 and ping myself, and it pings, and then I try pinging the other side, and it should go through the tunnel, and it should work. And I believe it is having issues because I need to tell it that that is going through that tunnel. So I will IP route add 192.168.123.0 slash 24 is going to be dev wire guard 0. And let's go ahead and do that on the other side as well. IP route. And I will do add 192.168.123.0/24 to the dev wg0. So do config, make sure that it's all up on this side. I'll ping myself ping 192.168.123.2 so I ping myself and ping the one and it is pinging through the tunnel now so I just need to add that route so if I jump over the other side and just verify that now I can actually ping the other side and it is pinging through the tunnel So at this point, you can see how to set up WireGuard to make it work. Um, you have to obviously create the keys. You have to be able to get the keys across. You have to open up the firewalls. You have to make sure it's all getting through and make sure you have your routes. But that will get you to having a WireGuard tunnel.